Hello, and welcome to the RPG Rundown. I'm Seth. And I'm Jeff from Dungeons to Deep Space. We've got the se- <laughs> we've got the systems and the stories for your table. Absolutely. Today <laughs> we are on episode 12. Nailed it. And <laughs> that we are. It's been a little bit. It has uh, been a little us. bit. We I, I I had a work trip which caused an absence, so apologies mm-hmm. for missing an episode for all of you keeping track out there. Uh, but we did miss you. Um, mm-hmm. And so we've got a lot And I'm sure there's a bunch of them keeping track too. So we. So just many. Apolog- yeah, so they all know this. Track. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, today we are on episode 12. And today we have a lot of news to cover. And so we're going to see if we can get through that. And then if we have time, we have uh, some some of our favorite paid tools that we like mm-hmm. to use for uh, when we run D and D or yes. if we're not, not just running, but also maybe in the prep and mm-hmm. world building. Right. Yes. Which uh, I will say, I, I realize in this niche, the term paid tools is kind of taboo, but sometimes the best thing you can do is, is pay for something that makes your job a little bit easier. Absolutely. Um, These are very and, and trust me, trip, I'm a bargain sure. hunter. Okay, I love free stuff, but sometimes you got to pay for a couple tools. Yeah, and and those are going to be mostly for GMs because yes, oh, absolutely, mostly you GMs. Know, pl- players don't necessarily need to do this. Like, I right. want my players to have the best experience possible, so I am willing to yes you know, pay a, a few yeah. bucks a month. I pay a little bit things. out there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Awesome. Uh, well, on top of that, we also have an exciting announcement at the end that we do and we'll get to that so uh but first jeff how are you doing man i am uh i am doing good uh, i'm with you been good. been busy uh but finally got to play a little bit of D last night so i am doing great awesome well that's good yeah um <clears throat> pardon me I, uh, how about yourself i uh we finally got to play a little D last week uh which is great and um and then, yeah. Otherwise, it's been, uh, man, it's been it's been busy, for sure. Yeah. I've had lots Same of stuff here. going on. So, yeah. uh, let's see. That is uh, usually how 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 it goes, though, right? Yes. But for you, sure. summer's summer's almost here, and uh, hopefully for me, things slow down a little bit when summer gets here. I agree, wholeheartedly. <laughs> uh, I am trying to get our presentation ready. And since I am a professional, absolutely most professional <laughs> episode we've made to date right most now happening. Professional. Uh, let's see. Okay. I think no. Goodness gracious. We good? Are things broken? Uh, you know, things that I thought were not broken, somehow uh, are. Now, and that is a uh, another great metaphor for for TTRPGs, right? Um, yeah, you introduce but a few you know magic what? items, and you think we're broken, and then your players happen. So there we go. I had the wrong source. That's what it was. Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> okay. Right. Well, uh, r- you know, very interesting listening if you're on the podcast, but <laughs> if you're watching on the YouTube on the LTN's uh, YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hey, you're about to see some awesome stuff. If you are listening, uh, we're about to show some things on the YouTube video, but we're going to talk about it. So mm-hmm. we're going to go Absolutely. into our news. And first up, some big controversial news, Jeff. D&D Beyond changed their format mm-hmm. and, and, and kind of had a, a website revamp. And right. it's a little controversial. Yes. First of all, it got a little bit of a facelift, not a ton, but mm-hmm. there's a little bit of a difference in a few things. Uh, the the menus and tools look, for the most part, very similar. Okay. Um, but there, but there's a few things that are different. But the really big differences mm-hmm. are the marketplace. Mm-hmm. That is what really got the big overhaul. Yeah. And so if you're following along on the on the YouTube, you'll see that now they have things listed almost like they were on the D&D website. 
And so uh, there's a banner at the top that shows uh, things that are now available, like maps. Um, let's see, I was trying to think if that was going to go sideways, but it's not going to do anything there. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's new arrivals, so books. Mm -hmm. And this is not just... This is not just Wizards of the Coast products. There's actually right. Wizards of the Coast products. There's some Kabold Press. There's uh, mm -hmm. Humblewood from Hit Point Press. So, so this includes our third party stuff that they are releasing right. That's on nice. Beyond. Yeah, they are now in there listed for you to purchase. Not only mm -hmm. are they digital, but you can also buy um, the digital and physical bundle sets, right, as well. However, the big controversy is that they took away all the cart purchasing from D and D Beyond. Mm -hmm. And if uh, you're like Jeff and you're like, "What is all the cart purchasing?" Right. Uh, yeah. Because I will be honest, I didn't know about this before, but it sounded like it was really cool. It, yeah, you missed it. <laughs> I used it a few times, just a few times. Yes. Okay. Uh, so. If you're not like me, or if you're more like me, rather, yes. uh, Seth here will fill you in on what this means. So the a la carte purchasing that we had what, on D&D Beyond previously was that if there was a book, adventure, source book, anything that came out, everything in that was, uh, you could buy the, buy the book digitally, mm -hmm. but if you didn't want the whole thing, you could buy mm -hmm. just the things you wanted. Yeah. So for example... In uh, Sword Coast Adventure, uh, it's a it's an adventure module. However, if you just wanted the backgrounds, like the character playable backgrounds, then you could just purchase the backgrounds, and they were usually a dollar ninety nine, or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you're talking about like Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, which is a, a rule source book, there you know pretty much everything in that book was broken down and you could buy it all piecemeal. Uh, so you could buy, but, but it was kind of cool because on the big rule books, you could actually purchase things in a way that was like smaller bundles or all in cart. So you could say, Oh, I just want to buy the giants playable race or whatever. Right. And so yeah. you could just buy the giants playable race and it was a dollar 99. Or you could say, I want all the new playable races from Tasha's cauldron and it would be like 10 bucks mm -hmm. uh, for maybe, you know, five or 10 different playable races. So you get a little bit of a deal. Uh, and then the, the cool thing was that later on, if you wanted to buy the rest of the book, whatever you spent a la carte, you would get mm -hmm. subtracted from your total purchase price. Well, they've taken away a la carte purchasing. It's no longer there at all. And... The Man. only way to now get your discount for previous a la carte purchases on a book like that is to go through customer support. So you can't just mm -hmm. click the book and it's not going to automatically deduct the cost of what you've already purchased. Right. Uh, so a lot of people might go in and click it either because A, they don't know, or B, they're like, oh, it's going to be too much trouble to go through customer service. Um, and so... It's just, it seems very shady right. and kind of a cash grab from Wizards. Uh, yeah, which is which is an interesting play considering everything that's taken place with Wizards here recently, right? Uh, I mean, really the kind of the birth of this podcast is is from the repercussions of, of Wizards' actions uh, yeah. previously, right? Like all the new really TTRPGs is. and stuff coming out is all because Wizards got greedy and then people are like, you know what, we can make our own game. And so we're like, hey, we want to play those games. And so here yeah, we are. Absolutely. And again, this is just kind of Wizards getting greedy again, it sounds like. It's, it, yeah. I mean, obviously this is what sparked the interest uh, mm -hmm. for us to play together. Mm -hmm. And it also sparked the interest for so many people who were following in the likes of Critical Role mm -hmm. or, um, you know, Matt Colville or... Uh, you know, so many yeah. different groups. Dungeon Coach, yeah. Uh, but yes, absolutely. The the OGL problem mm -hmm. that happened over a year and a half ago at this point mm -hmm. was kind of the, um, yeah, the inspiration for us to say, hey, let's look at all these others. Because I, I right. already had a bunch of other TTRPG rule books and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I've played a few others. Tales from the Loop, Star Wars, stuff like that. Sure, um, absolutely. But yeah, we definitely started having more conversations about like, oh, let's look at these others. And, and right, as these other we, games are coming out, it's they're looking really yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of a, a big blow to mm-hmm. uh, D&D Beyond, honestly. Right. I think now, that... I mean, I, I will say is someone who never knew there was an a la carte art option, like, hey, it sounds great. I probably look more into it. Yeah. Um, but now seeing that it's been taken away and maybe you can kind of justify it as like, you know, it was a favor they were providing for, for at that time. And really, they didn't even have to do it at that time. But now the like the sudden taking it away, but also not making it an automated process so that now if I decide to buy the whole book, I don't automatically get a reduced price. Like I have to contact customer service and things like that. Like, I mean, I feel like you could at least do that well, favor. It was already for, for in people. place. They right. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Anything. It was already in place. They like the fact they just removed that is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree. It's, it's definitely a, a greedy look. Yeah. And well, and, and the thing is, is that a la carte was there because of D and D beyond mm-hmm. like D and D beyond predated being owned by D and D like was a sure. host. Yeah, absolutely. It was a separate entity that was licensed to sell this stuff. Mm-hmm. And they chose that model, the a la carte model. Right. And so And so maybe this greedy has been should have been Because expected. here's the thing, I, don't I honestly know. don't even contribute most of this to the D and D team. Right. I think the D and D team would be very happy to leave things how they've been working rather than some of these big changes like this. Uh but Hasbro, uh, I swear, is probably the ones coming down from on high to say uh, uh you need to make us more money even though you're the most profitable thing we had. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so. Right, yeah. Anyway. Um, it definitely is, you know. The thing is like, I mean, even from a, you know, marketing branding perspective, like from a branding perspective, things like this, will ultimately like the, the, the greediness and what this does to the brand will, will end up losing more money than it will gain. Uh, in most cases, like just with the OGL problems, like I'm sure mm-hmm. that, them more money than it ever came close to gaining them and stuff yeah absolutely uh uh, it's just i don't know it's just sad to me because like i said you know if you're watching on the video i'm just showing humblewood as an example that says Mm -hmm. uh it's dnd fifth edition there's 14 magic items there's 10 species four uh 12 subspecies four subclasses 46 monsters 11 maps and 10 spells and Mm -hmm. all of those would have been broken out a la carte mm. and you could have right bought, so you could have bought just the, the species just, just the species yeah. you could have bought just one species mm-hmm. which is a, a race essentially you could have bought just one for $1.99 mm-hmm. or you could have bought all 10 and the 12 subspecies for probably like 10 or 15 bucks as opposed to spending right. 50 bucks for the entire book mm. uh, same with the monsters you could have spent like 10 or 15 bucks and just got the monsters so I don't know. Right. Honestly, in this day and age of, you know, um, the kind of like transactions that we're used to seeing, it's a little surprising they actually went this way to me. Mm-hmm. Like, right. They were ma- definitely making more money on the front end mm-hmm. to have those. But, uh, right. I don't this know. is, this is the direction they, they chose. <laughs> and yes, uh, it just continues to alienate some people, I, and, and we'll get into our third-party tools soon. But um, sure, like, but I, I would love to like if you're you're watching the video, if you're on YouTube, down in the comments, let us know your thoughts on this. Does this affect absolutely. things? Did you use the a la carte options? Right? Does this matter at all to you? I guess like um, to yeah. me, it definitely seems greedy, uh, which just you know maybe doesn't surprise me at this point, but. A la carte, it's fortunately, wasn't something I was using shocking. previously. Still a little Do shocking. I, still, I mean, yeah, but then I'm at like, uh, then it's like, oh, you know, Wizards did this and, you know, it, they didn't think about their customers at all. And I'm like, oh, yeah. man, we definitely shocking. Shouldn't, we shouldn't be shocked anymore. That's for sure. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I'd love to hear from anyone watching this. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, uh, well, let's move on, shall we? Sure. Uh, um, I think. St- yeah, go ahead. I'm going to the next section. So I think or, some of the bigger news right now, or do you have something else? Nope. Go ahead. 
No. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I think some of the bigger well-known news right now is that Critical Role just launched their own subscription program, Beacon.tv. Uh, and so it's a new subscription service. You can go um, and you can access all the stuff they've they've made, created. Uh, it's actually, I mean, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, uh, Seth, what are your thoughts on it? Have you had a chance to scroll around? Um, yeah, have you absolutely. subscribed or anything yet? I have not subscribed. Okay. Uh, so here's the thing. One thing that they wanted to make sure they made a video about this. Mm -hmm. And in the video, they said, Hey, if you subscribe to Twitch, if you, um, you know, are sub subbed on YouTube or, or wherever, then those methods of getting our content are still there. They're not going away. Mm -hmm. so right. Which is awesome. Get, yeah. You'll still get access to stuff early on Twitch. Uh, but what beacon is essentially doing is, They've launched Beacon, which if you know anything about their universe, the Beacon was like it's it's a magical item in in their in Matt Mercer's world. It's uh, the Beacons, um, and so essentially, this is their own cultivated Patreon uh, okay. service, right? But it's a good way without, to think about it. But without going through Patreon, mm -hmm. so like Patreon. Right. If you sub to someone, you can get access to videos early. You can get access to uh, even some content that is only available to pay, you know, to subscribers. You can get uh, discounts on gear. You get access to a special Discord. Um, again, these these are these are things that are Patreon exclusives for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But rather than you know, I think they want to transition people to, to Beacon TV because uh, Twitch obviously takes their massive cut. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Patreon's cut is not nearly as big, but it's still a cut. It's still a they cut. Take because, because Patreon takes a cut on top of their credit card processing fees. Mm -hmm. And so this way they get to do, they get to take everything <laughs> mm -hmm. except the credit card processing fees. Right. Um, yeah. And something like from the user's perspective, you don't think a lot about, but you know, if you support on any platform, that platform is charging the creator. Absolutely. And, and so, I mean, and especially when an operation as big as critical role, that charge could be pretty massive. Oh, 100%. And you know, 20, you know, they've been partnered for a long time, so they're getting the 75% partner split on Twitch. Oh, sure. Absolutely. It's still 25%. Yeah, that they're losing, uh, and, yeah. and and they're like I said, some of the things that they're offering does sound pretty cool. Like you get like a fifteen percent off, I think. Let me mm -hmm. see. Let me. I can tell you exactly. So so this is also here. This is also what's cool. The membership for Beacon is the same amount as a Twitch subscription. Right. So it's not some massive price increase. Mm -hmm. So if you're subbing on Twitch. I think that's why they made it this way because they're like, hey, you could just come over here and get all these extra things from yeah. us. And, and honestly, just the way that like I'm just looking at it now from from a, a like usability standpoint, like everything is so well organized because Critical Role makes an, an incredible amount of stuff. Like, I mean, they're all sorts smart. of different. Yeah. Yeah. And they actually have everything divided out. Um, I mean, they have the, the Mighty Nine stuff. They have the Xandria Unlimited. They have mm -hmm. uh, abridged versions of all of their sessions, so uh, that, at least looking at season three. Definitely a big draw for me right now. That, I, I'm, I'm honestly thinking up. about getting it just to watch this and catch up because I am not caught up at all. Mm -hmm. And yes, I was just clicking through the abridged stuff right now. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, that right there is worth it for me. I mean... Yeah, the only problem is that it's only... Um... Like right now, all they have is season three, campaign three. Yes, yeah, that's what and I was looking at. It looks like it's only season three, and but. it's not all of them yet. So like, I'm not to a point yet where I'm not. I like. I've watched up to the current abridged episodes. I, I'm oh, well have you? Okay. It. Yeah, like there's like eighty some, you know, eighty or ninety some episodes in season three so already so far, and I'm okay, probably okay. in the sixties or seventies. So there's a ways to go before I'm like, oh, okay. I watched up to like episode that. four and then I fell off. I, I'm so bad at keeping up with stuff. <sighs> it hasn't been my favorite season. So. 
it started like when it started i like i jumped in this was the first time i ever jumped in at the start of a uh, critical role season mm -hmm. and jenna like yeah i'm gonna watch it i'm gonna keep up with everyone that lasted for like three weeks okay and then very quickly i missed an episode and then i yeah anyway I, i'm i'm not great at keeping up with stuff yeah i'm more interested in the Reslayers take which is going to be another little side campaign they're doing mm, uh, okay see i like you, side campaigns uh you didn't I don't think you, you may not have saw it in campaign two. They had the Slayer's Take, which was basically a monster hunter service. Oh, that sounds awesome. And so they joined it for a little bit because they had to do some stuff in season yeah. two. And in our last episode, we talked about, you know, different um, worlds and, and stuff in like, you know, TTRPGs that we were excited about. And one of my favorite ones was actually a monster hunter type one. So that's pretty cool. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. So there's, uh, there, there's going to be a new campaign starting on May 20th for it so Ooh, okay uh so oh, i've checked it out you know but again so the the benefits of joining beacon are that you get same day access to the vods as opposed to the week after you get early access to the abridged and uh reslayers take amidst you get exclusive access to critical role cooldown and fireside chats uh you'll get pre-sale events for tickets if like they're gonna do an event mm -hmm. um and then 10% discount on all online shops and a members only discord. So, okay. and like I said, it, the fact that it's the same price as Twitch to me right. makes it very palatable. Right. And, and I will say this, like the fact that they are still keeping their con their free content on, on Twitch, their free content on YouTube. Like it's, it's still there for you to consume however you like, and you don't necessarily have to pay them for it. Like it's one of the things I've always liked about critical role is it does seem like they love their, you know, viewer base and they, you know, Absolutely. at the end of the day, they're trying to make things easier. Obviously they're a company, they're a business. They're trying to bring in money and finances. Like they're absolutely doing that, but at the same time, they want to make sure that everything is still available for the viewer base. So I, I don't know. I think that especially coming off what we talked about just a moment ago is, is, you know, pretty telling makes me want to support them. Uh, it definitely makes me want to, um, you know, from, from that perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like as opposed to now here's the only difference, only problem. Mm -hmm. I often used my Twitch prime sub on. Mm. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Roll. So I wasn't really paying right. anything. <laughs> right. No, you got it for free. Yeah. <laughs> so at this point it's like, well, if I must support them, then I'm actually supporting them. Right. Yeah. Um, that's fair. Which is, like I said, uh, the good thing is, again, too, I think I could definitely do it whenever I do want to catch up on Abridged, but it'll probably be mm -hmm. a while before I do that. Uh, right. So. It's going to be a while before they catch you, it looks like. Right. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. um, anyway, uh, I think, you know, good for them. I think they're big enough absolutely. to can absolutely do it. Uh, I think everyone else is going to be subject to uh, coffee or Patreon. Mm-hmm. As, right. uh, as their option to do something like this, which is yeah. fine. They charge way less. In fact, coffee charges less than Patreon. Right, um, which is awesome. So yeah. uh, it's just not nearly as popular or as mm -hmm. flushed out, I don't think. so. Right. And uh, kind of on the, just since we're talking about Critical Role, uh, it looks like Daggerheart 1.4 uh, is is out now. So if you've been following Daggerheart and everything, there has been a uh, new issue you know, or updates to it. Yeah. Absolutely. And we, I have yet to dive into it other than watch a few, uh, friendly videos on mm -hmm. the differences. Uh, they did go back to some of the things they had originally, which I think is nice. Okay. Uh, nice. With a few minor changes. So, uh, the advantage disadvantage is back to a D six and okay. some other That's stuff. Good. So, Right. All right. And so, you know, they're testing things out. They're getting feedback and they're, you know, kind of perfecting the system that they've built. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, real quick. Uh, Kabold Press has had their digital launch of Tales of the Valiant, their 5E uh, alternative <laughs> to mm -hmm. the Wizards of the Coast uh, 5E. Um, so... I backed them on Kickstarter, so I was I've already gotten my digital versions of okay. those uh, of the player's guide and the monster uh, collection. Mm. Oh, so nice. 
awesome stuff. It's it's a lot. I have yet to be able to go through it <laughs> very like fully. Um, or you maybe telling the people they should expect maybe a test play from. I think if not a test play, then definitely some sort of review later on. So wow, more okay. in depth for sure. Okay. Um, but to coincide with their digital release, they had something. They had an online con, a free online con called Kabold Con. And uh, okay. they had a whole bunch of like interviews and and game people playing the game, mm-hmm. um, a whole bunch of stuff going on over this last weekend. So okay, nice. it was kind of cool. It was kind of cool to see this free free con uh, online. So, um, so yeah. Uh, let's see. I think you want to cover. Uh, sure. Looks like. Uh, yeah, so also if you've you know been following DC Twenty, which is another one of those games that came out from the OGL, it's from uh, from Dungeon Coach. We got to test play it. It is mm-hmm. amazing. I uh, really enjoyed it. Can't wait to revisit it. But we uh, the June fourth, the Kickstarter for DC Twenty is launching. Um, so I actually I just typed in uh, DC Twenty Kickstarter and got brought to it immediately. If you want to get notified for the launch, um, this is. A great system we've already we are we got to, t- to do an early early test play of it uh, and really enjoyed it and i i don't know i personally love dungeon coach i uh, love the stuff he puts out it, his creative twist on everything and i'm really excited to see what's happening with dc20 um, what are your thoughts on the kickstarter i know you're you you love I'm kickstarters pumped. yeah pumped. so okay um yeah definitely gonna have to get on in on that so absolutely uh, one second yeah Okay. Uh, well, uh, sorry, like I said, moving on. Uh, we did have <laughs> <laughs> that Tales of the Valiant yes. release uh, again, oh. on the video. I'm just like showing the splash for it. Oh, nice. Uh, okay. And then uh, the DC20 Kickstarter. Uh, super pumped for that. Very mm-hmm. excited. Um, yeah. Th- yeah, that's going to be great. DC20 yeah. is one of my, I really want to play a longer mini campaign, maybe a long form campaign on See, uh, to really get the feel for I it. I totally agree. But at the same time, I'm so torn because I want to do it with Tales of the Valiant. I want to do yep. it with DC20. I want to do it with mm-hmm. Daggerheart. With Daggerheart, yeah. <laughs> and then whenever Matt Colville's come out, I, I'm sure I'm going to want to play it with, with Matt's as well. And so yep. anyway, a lot of great systems. I, I, I back to that. Uh, I'm back yeah. as well. So. Oh, great. Um, Okay, well, also, uh, if you're a fan of the show, you know that I'm a big fan of Battletech. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's TTRPG adjacent, uh, because they do have one uh, called MechWarrior, but um, (laughs) the CGL's uh, Mercenaries Kickstarter looks like it's about to ship, which is awesome. So um, that was just a, a quick rundown on some new stuff, but definitely related to both that and TTRPGs, mm-hmm. this Kickstarter called Mechborg and Steel Psalm is a mech style. It, it's actually two games in one. Uh, not really in one, it's just two games. There's a uh, skirmish game that is miniature focused for mechs. Mm, okay. And that one's called Steel Psalm. Psalm. Mm hmm. And then Mechborg is the TTRPG version of the game, and it is based off of uh, Morkborg, hmm. if you okay. are familiar with Morkborg. So uh, what's awesome is that the guy who wrote this, uh, Dave Hamrick, uh, goes by DM Dave on Patreon and online, has put out a ton of TTRPG content, 5e content, other stuff, and funny enough, he has a store, or he opened a store in Oklahoma, because I didn't realize he was from Oklahoma until he opened oh, wow. the store. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's a funny coincidence, uh, but I've met him. Super awesome guy. His store is fantastic. He actually, um, you know, supports mm-hmm. all the TTRPGs, but uh, also has a big... Uh, Battletech and MechWarrior following down there as well. That's pretty awesome. And I so, didn't that. Yeah, so it's pretty cool that he with uh, along with this other person wrote basically, you know, wrote um like Mortborg is is very open 
And so there's mm -hmm. lots of customizations, custom options for it. I've seen a pirate one. I've seen a couple others. And so the fact that they're doing a Mechborg one, uh, which it is DC, it is D20 based. Um, so yeah, I'm super looking forward to this. Yeah, that sounds out. awesome. Yeah. Uh, both, both the miniature skirmish game and the DTRPG. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. Um, other than that, um, I know we kind of mentioned talking about uh, some of our, our TTRPG paid tools, but I mm -hmm. think we should give that more of a focus in another episode. So sure. we're going to, we're going to uh, push pause on that. Uh, but we do have one more announcement here tonight. Mm -hmm. We do. Um, we are super excited to announce that Jeff and myself are going to mm -hmm. be at Gen Con. Yeah. Da -da -da. Oh, uh, so excited. Super pumped. We're both coming mm -hmm. through the our uh, our kind of you know parent organization here, Love Thy Nerd. Mm -hmm. So yes. if you're familiar, uh, Love Thy Nerd does missions to different groups uh, or with different groups to conferences and everything. Mm -hmm. And so we are coming to Gen Con as part of Love Thy Nerd. We are going to be volunteering. I believe the group is All Play. I think. Uh, all Play. Yep. Yes. We'll be uh, we'll be at the All Play booth. Um, yes. Working there. And when we're not there, we will be mm -hmm. doing many other things, including many many other things. Uh, doing at least recording something for RPG yeah. Rundown. We have to uh, do at least something live. Oh, we're uh, going to be doing something. In oh, fact, absolutely. Um, I plan on getting uh, some uh, of the Rode wireless mics. Oh, okay, the, and, nice. And the and the little uh and the little interview wand yeah, yeah. to stick it on, so that we're mm -hmm. we're totally we're, we'll do some interview style. Dude, we're gonna do something awesome. Yeah. yeah. So it, I'm I'm I guess we should throw this out there. They might not realize uh, Seth and I don't live anywhere near each other. Not uh, anywhere close. Yeah, and so fact, we've never met in person. <laughs> we've never met in person. So this will be after like years of of being friends yeah. online. We'll actually get to meet each other at Gen Con. So that's pretty oh, awesome. Man. It's gonna be great. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, well, I'm looking forward to it. And we'll have to we'll make some real content while we're there. Uh, and, and make sure we get that out. So make sure you guys are staying tuned and looking for that. Yeah, and and hopefully we'll have some like fun swag. We don't know what yet. We don't know. We're still working on that, but if you recognize us at Gen Con, you come up yes. to us, tell us you know us from RPG Rundown, and we will have something for you. Absolutely, we will. And maybe uh, in the next episode, we'll announce what that something is as we <laughs> figure it out. If we can decide. If we can decide. Right <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, we're, we're super pumped. Uh, this actually... This is actually our, so the way Love Thy Nerd does their podcasts, they go in mm -hmm. seasons and there's usually two seasons in a year with mm -hmm. hiatuses, um, you know, breaks for summer and breaks for winter. Yep. So uh, this is our second to last episode for this spring season, actually. Mm -hmm. it so is. we'll have one yeah. more. Uh, so we'll have to, we have to get all of our stuff uh, right. in order for that. But, uh, but then after that, we'll, um, we may have Maybe we'll do something summer related and then we'll definitely have something to cover Gen Con. So yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, keep key, you know, give us give us a follow, give us a, a like and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, make sure you follow our playlist, uh, podcast playlist on the Love Thy Nerd YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And uh we'll go from there. So right. uh last thing, uh Love Thy Nerd. We just wanted to rem remind you that Love Thy Nerd uh, has partnered uh, with, and the R RPG Rundown is now mm -hmm. streaming on the Glue Network. That's yeah. GLU, uh, which is a streaming platform available on Roku, smart TVs, as well as iPhone and Android, uh, even Xbox, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a really cool service. It's uh, great. You know, it exists to unlock the spirit inspirational values of faith centric programming and partnering with Christian content creators, uh, like love thy nerd and the <laughs> RPG rundown and LTN is proud to join our friends, God squad church and unity gaming as the first group of nerd culture channels on the platform. So be sure to download it today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Make sure you check it out. There's actually some really cool stuff on there. Uh, I've got it. I've had my kids on there watching some stuff. It's yeah. a, it's a really cool app. Yeah, um, it it may sometimes it's a little hard to find, 
but uh mm-hmm. but yeah definitely check it out for sure so mm-hmm. uh all right well i think that's gonna cover it for today a little bit of a short episode it was um but we wanted to get some stuff out to you guys. We wanted to say hi to you guys and mm-hmm. let you know we're coming to Gen Con because we're super Absolutely. pumped for that. And, and again, I, I just I can't stress it enough. If you guys see us there, make sure you stop us and say hey Please. and uh, let us know that you watch watch the channel. We'd love to know. Absolutely. Well, uh, from our table to yours, thanks for joining the RPG Rundown. And until next time, may your roles be epic and your stories legendary. <laughs>